Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm It's Robbie Rhino and in today's video I will be reviewing the brand new Ultproto AMX30 which is of course the premium French tier 9 medium tank for the World War II game mode. I'm going to be telling you everything you need to know about this vehicle in today's video. We're going to be comparing the Ultproto AMX30 to the Revelry say the AMX CDC and the Lance and C so three other premium tier 8 medium tanks to see how the Alt Proto AMX30 holds up and we'll be doing that over here on Excel comparing the stats of the Alt Proto AMX30 and seeing uh, what's good about this vehicle, what's bad and what you want to look out for. We're also going to be going over to tanks.gg and having a look at the armor layout of the Alt Proto AMX30 to see how this weirdly shaped tank holds up in terms of its armor. I'll talk you through my command and equipment set up over here on Excel with the highlighted bits showing you what uh, has improved with my commander and equipment set up and then we're going to get stuck into four gameplays to try and demonstrate how this thing performs on the battlefield but if we head back to the article of this vehicle let's have a look at what it looks like so as you can see it does have a centrally located turret which is a bit of an odd shape for a medium tank however it does have a beautiful 11 degrees of gun depression all around the vehicle and as you can see there's some nice sloping to the upper plate so hopefully that does hold up on the battlefield and we're going to have a look at how good the armor is on tanks.gg in just a little bit but here's the side profile quite a large medium tank with a fairly large uh, side profile and you don't have many hit points to play with so you're going to have to think about how you're playing your supporting role in the old proto amx 30 but yeah a very strange looking medium tank as the prototype for the amx 30 how much does this vehicle cost if you wanted to purchase this vehicle well you can get a variety of bundles until the 28th of march there's three bundles to choose from there's the primed bundle which is 13,400 gold that comes with equipment premium time and boosters Next is the fully loaded bundle, 11,200 gold. That comes with just the premium time and the boosters. And lastly down here is the base bundle, just the tank by itself, 8,800 gold, which is a pretty reasonable price for a brand new tier eight premium medium tank. You're gonna be sure that at some point this will be about 30 to 50% off in a sale, but it might take half a year to a year to get that. So if you want this vehicle now, it's a reasonable price and hopefully this review will be able to help you make up your mind whether this vehicle is worth it. But we're going to head over now to Excel where I've got all of the stats of the old Proto AMX30 here on the left. And we're going to be comparing it to the M4A1 Revelry say and this AMX CDC which are two other French uh, tier 8 premium medium tanks. And we're also going to be comparing to the Lansen C which is a Swedish premium tier 8 medium tank. It's not the Draugen, it's the other one. It's the Lance and C, the same as the one you get on the PC version with the 105 millimeter gun. So similar medium tanks. So we're going to see how the stats of the old Proto AMX30 holds up. Uh, if you haven't seen my tank comparisons before, green is the best stat, red is the worst in the comparison, and orange is somewhere in between. And the ones highlighted in yellow are the updated stats with my equipment and my commander setup applied to it. So I'll show you what that is a little bit later on. But we're going to start with the bonuses of the old Proto AMX30. It has a 15% XP bonus and a 50% silver bonus. The XP bonus is the same as all the other vehicles in this comparison at 15% and the silver bonus is the same as well. 50% on all of these vehicles in this comparison. The only difference between the bonuses of these tanks, tanks is that the Lance and C has a 20% commander XP bonus, whereas the Alt Proto AMX30 and the other two French premium tier 8 medium tanks have 0% commander xp bonus as well so the best uh, to train your commanders in this comparison would be the lance and c however they have the exact same stats in the xp and silver bonus uh, columns next we're going to have a look at the raw stats and have 
a look at the hit points, view range and steel concealment of all these vehicles. And as you can see, the Alt Proto AMX30 has 1,250 hit points, which is extremely low for such a large profile medium tank. It's not as good as the Lancer C, which has 1,350 hit points, and it's miles off the Reveler Rise and the AMX CDC, which have 1,400 hit points. So you're going to want to have to use the armor as effectively as uh, you can and I'll try and show you how I did that a little bit later on with my uh, look at the armor profile on tanks.gg and you're going to want to try and preserve these hit points as best as possible because you're pretty large profile tank you're going to want to try and play a supporting role and yeah trade effectively with this 100 millimeter gun in terms of the view range 380 meters, the same as the Lance and C, but it is 10 meters worse than the Reveler Rise and the CDC. It's not the end of the world. You can get that up to a decent level. As you can see here, I've got 497 meters view range using things like situational awareness and the advanced optics piece of equipment and using combat rations as a consumable choice uh, but yeah if you want to be able to spot for yourself you are going to have to use everything in your power to boost that view range up and lastly in terms of the still concealment rating it's not going to be great as you are a fairly large tank 353.36 meters still concealment rating not uh, as good as the Lance and C, which is the best in this comparison at 328.08 meters still concealment, but it is better than the uh, Reveler Rise and it's uh, slightly worse than the CDC. I do use camouflage expertise as a commander uh, skill just to get down a little bit to try and reduce the chance of getting spotted, but you are a fairly large tank and your concealment rating isn't too good at all, so that's why I've included it in today's comparison. And next we're going to have a look at the mobility of the Alt Proto AMX30 and the other tanks in today's video and it's pretty good news on the whole for the Alt Proto AMX30 you have a 680 horsepower engine with a 24.29 power to weight ratio you can go a lovely 65 kilometers an hour forwards and 23 kilometers an hour in reverse your hull traverse is 36 degrees a second and your turret traverse is 38 degrees a second so how does it hold up to the other tanks in this comparison? Well, as you can see, the CDC does have a whopping 1,200 horsepower engine, which means that it does have the best horsepower and the best power to weight at 35.29. However, the Alt Proto AMX30 is comparable to the Lance and C, just a four power to weight ratio off the Lance and C, and it does beat the Reveler Rise in terms of its engine power and power to weight. The Alt Proto does have the best top forward speed and the best top reverse speed once you do get up to that. You could consider using the mobility pieces of equipment to improve your power to weight and top forward and reverse speeds as well as your hold reverse. However, it's pretty decent as it is and I found that you're able to get to where you need to without having to use the mobility pieces of equipment and you want to invest your equipment and your commander skills into improving the DPM, your view range and other aspects of this tank. The hull traverse is the worst in this comparison at 36 degrees a second. It's not brilliant, but when you do get up to your top forward speed, it does feel relatively nimble. Uh, if you wanted to improve that, you're going to have to use um, the traction system to improve your traverse speeds. But I found that it's not too much of a hindrance. It's only slightly off the 40 degrees a second that the Reveler Rise CDC and the Lance and C have. Lastly, in terms of the turret traverse, it's not the best in this comparison, which is the Reveler Rise at 42 degrees a second, but it's the same as the CDC and much better than the Lance and C. And with gun handling skills, that improves dramatically. And as you can see, I've got my turret traverse to a whopping 47.35 degrees a second. And I'll show you how I did that a little bit later on. But Overall, pretty good news for the uh, Alt Proto AMX30. A decent engine power and power to weight. Best in class, top forward and reverse speeds. Hull traverse, not brilliant, but not game breaking for this tank. And the turret traverse, good enough to improve it to a very good level indeed. 
So that's good news in terms of the mobility of this tank. How about its 100 millimeter gun? Well, as you can see, the other tanks in this comparison do have different calibers of gun. The Rebel Arise and the Lance and Sea have 105 millimeter guns and the AMX CDC does have a smaller 90 millimeter caliber gun. So definitely take that into consideration when we are comparing these guns. The Alt Proto AMX 30's 100mm gun fires AP as standard, APCR as its premium ammunition selection and HE as its third ammunition choice. The damage on these rounds are 300 for the standard and premium rounds and 400 for those HE rounds. You have 232mm of penetration on your standard AP rounds, 263mm of penetration on your premium APCR rounds and 50 millimeters of penetration on those HE rounds. And lastly, in terms of your shell velocity, 1,000 meters a second on your standard rounds, 1,250 uh, meters a second shell velocity on your premium APCR rounds, and 1,000 meters a second shell velocity on your HE rounds, which is very nice for HE indeed, meaning that you don't have to give an awful lot of lead when you're firing at sort of mid to longer ranges. And now we're going to be comparing the stats to the other tanks in this comparison. So as you can see, the Alt Proto AMX-30 does have the best uh, premium and HE shell velocity in this comparison, beating the other tanks apart from the AMX CDC, which is exactly the same. Uh, but what I want to highlight is these parts here the penetration on the standard and premium rounds which is the best in this comparison meaning that if you are a free to play player you don't like firing a lot of premium rounds the Alt Proto Air Mix 30 is a very good choice 232 millimeters of penetration for a tier 8 medium tank is pretty decent and if you do want to fire those premium rounds you have 263 millimeters of penetration which is the best in this comparison very decent for a tier 8 premium medium tank and you do have that lovely 1250 meters a second shell velocity that's pretty good for sniping at mid to long ranges but just bear in mind that apcr rounds do lose penetration over distance so that's definitely something to take into account if you are sniping with this gun as you can see the revel Arise does have the best shell velocity on its standard rounds and with its 105 millimeter gun it does have the best alpha damage at 390 on the standard and premium rounds and 480 on the he rounds the lowest damage in this comparison goes to the cdc as it does have a smaller 90 millimeter caliber gun the smallest in this comparison with 240 alpha damage on its standard and premium rounds and the 105 millimeter gun on the lance and c is 320 alpha damage which does fall uh, short of the 390 alpha damage on the Rebel Arise. Uh, the only other thing to take into account looking at the stats of all of these tanks is that uh, the AMX uh, 30 or the Alt Proto AMX 30 is kind of in the middle in terms of its alpha damage but it is quite a nice alpha damage and the DPM as we'll see in a little bit isn't too bad and you can get it up to a pretty decent level and you feel like when you are uh, trading with a tank like the CDC that has a smaller 90 millimeter caliber gun you are hitting harder and you're hitting pretty consistently as we're going to see with the accuracy and with the aim time of the Alt Proto AMX 30 but when we look at this stat it's got great shell velocity on all of its rounds really for a tier 8 medium tank fantastic penetration on its standard and premium rounds nice alpha damage enough penetration to use on sort of light tanks lightly armored tank destroyers and those pesky spgs or artillery at the end of the game uh, it's not the best in terms of its standard shell velocity but apart from that it's a pretty decent 100 millimeter gun and lastly, we're going to get on to the aim time, the accuracy, the DPM, and then we're going to look at the gun depression and elevation. So as you can see, the aim time, 2.1 seconds on the Alt Proto AMX 30. That's the best in this comparison. It beats the Revel Arise and the CDC by a little bit, and it beats the Lance and C by some way. The accuracy isn't the best in this comparison 
that goes to the AMX CDC at 0.34, but 0.36 on the Alt Proto AMX 30 is just a little bit behind. Uh, pretty much comparable to the Reveler Rise, and it's much, much better than the 0.38 accuracy on the Lance and C. And you can get this down to a very good level. As you can see here, I've got mine down to 0.28 accuracy, which does feel very nice with the aim time I've got down to 1.9 seconds. Next, the DPM 1857. That is just a little bit better than the Reveler Rise. Not as good as the 1973 damage per minute on the CDC, but it does beat the Lance and C, so it is somewhere in the middle. But that's a pretty decent DPM for a 100mm gun with 300 alpha damage, and you can improve that quite dramatically. I've got mine up to 2349, and you do have a little bit of armor. And as we're going to see, you do have a fantastic gun depression value in just a little bit. The reload on this 105mm gun is 9.7 seconds. That is somewhere in between in this comparison. Of course, the CDC will have a better reload as it's a smaller caliber gun at 7.3 seconds. But you do have a better reload than the Reveler Rise and the Lansen C. Lastly, let's talk about the ammo capacity, the gun depression and elevation. You carry 50 rounds, which is comparable to the Reveler Rise and Lance and C. And the AMX CDC carries uh, many more rounds as it is a faster firing 90mm smaller caliber gun. And lastly, the gun depression, the best in class in this comparison, goes to the Alt Proto AMX 30 at a lovely 11 degrees of gun depression. And this is all around the tank, meaning that no matter if you're reversing into a position or you're side on or you're using the front of your hull and your turret, you do have that lovely 11 degrees of gun depression. Very nice to use on a ridgeline and it does feel very comfortable indeed. It beats the other tanks in this comparison. They all have 10 degrees of gun depression. In terms of the gun elevation, it is the worst in this comparison. In very typical French fashion, it has a very poor gun elevation value. It can catch you out if you're trying to shoot at targets that are above you when you're going downhill. But if you are aware of it, it doesn't become too much of an issue. The best in class goes to the Lance and C and CDC at 20 degrees of gun elevation. But that's it for the overall look at the Alt Proto AMX 30. We're now going to head over to tanks.gg, have a look at the armor profile of the Alt Proto AMX 30, and then I will talk you through my equipment and commander setup and how that affects the stats of this vehicle. So here is the Alt Proto AMX 30 on tanks.gg. We have the same armor profile that this tank does have on the PC version of World of Tanks. And we're now going to have a look at the armor profile as if we were looking directly at the Alt Proto AMX 30 and it's not using any of its gun depression. As you can see, a lot of it's highlighted in green, meaning it is pretty poor. You have this middle section of the upper plate, which is 60 millimeters of armor. And if you are looking at it like this directly into the gun, you can go through this with only 122 millimeters of penetration. So a very poor upper plate in the middle and the lower plate is pretty garbage, 65 millimeters of armor. And you can go through this with 80 millimeters or more of penetration. Something to watch out for are these two uh, flaps that go over the tracks, as you can see here from the front. To go through that, you're not going to be able to. It's above a 75 degree angle, so you're going to be auto ricocheting off these two flaps. So definitely, if you're shooting at this thing from the front, just shoot the middle of the upper hole or the lower plate, and you should be able to go through very nicely indeed. It has a cupola, which is 70 millimeters of armor, and you can see this if it's not using its gun depression. You can go through this with 100 millimeters of penetration or more. And in terms of the turret, if you can't see the upper plate and it's not using any of its gun depression, you can go through that cupola or you can go through between the mantlet and the slope back sides of this turret. To go through here, you only need 163 millimeters of penetration or more to go through. Underneath the gun and uh, underneath the mantlet, you can go through with 150 millimeters of penetration or more. And above the mantlet, towards the roof of this tank, you're only going to need around 50 millimeters or more penetration to go through. 
and if you've got a high caliber gun with good penetration you can go through the mantlet uh, with 278 millimeters or 280 millimeters uh, of penetration or more so tier 9 tier 10 tank destroyers will go through the mantlet of this tank very easily indeed uh, one thing to know about this tank is that it has 40 millimeters of side armor which means that to overmatch the side of this tank if say if it's side scraping like this you need a gun caliber of 121 millimeters or more to go through so as you can see as if we're using the alt proto amx 30s gun the 100 millimeter gun this is an auto ricochet angle if this thing's side scraping so it's quite a good side scraper against gun calibers of 120 20 millimeters or less but a higher caliber gun will overmatch the side of this tank and one thing to note is that if you are a below this tank and it's side scraping in a smaller profile tank you can shoot up into these flaps and go through as these flaps go over the tracks as you can see you can penetrate and uh, track this thing from the front because there is no hitbox it is just tracks you will track this in place but you won't deal any damage so that definitely is something to think about uh, from the front if you are playing the alt pro to amx 30 and you want to make it as effective as possible try and bait people into shooting these flaps in these auto ricochet angles or you can over angle the front of this tank like this make it above a 70 degree angle and it will be an auto ricochet angle and the lower plate you're not going to really get people to bounce off it unless you are at an angle like this a very steep angle coming around a corner and that is an auto ricochet angle uh, if you are shooting at this thing from the side and you want to track it in place you can penetrate and damage and track this tank at the front and the rear drive rail so that's definitely something to take advantage of and if you're shooting at this thing from the side watch out for shooting this side of the upper plate it's a auto ricochet angle at above 70 degrees so just shoot the turret in the side or the side of the hole towards the middle and the back and you should go through lastly we're going to have a look at this tank as if it's using the full extent of its 11 degrees of gun depression which as you can see is all around the vehicle so if you're uh, coming up against an Alt Pro to AMX 30 and it's on a ridge line and you can't see its lower plate the upper plate will be an auto ricochet angle you won't be able to see the cupola so to go through this turret shoot towards the left of the mantlet and uh, to the right of this sloped back of the turret you need 156 millimeters or basically 156 to 160 millimeters of penetration to go through or you could shoot underneath the mantlet and you only need 150 millimeters to go through but the turret does become relatively strong if it's using the 11 degrees of its gun depression there are some parts here which are 400 plus millimeters to go through so you they are going to be absorbed shots towards the top of the uh, mantlet that's an auto ricochet angle so it becomes strong there and to go through to the left and right of the gun you're going to need a tier 9 or tier 10 uh, tank destroyer penetration of 280 millimeters or more to go through but 11 degrees of gun depression very useful hides as much as your lower plate as possible try and bait people into shooting your upper plate and you might get a few ricochets and when you're facing someone just try and wiggle a little bit get them to bounce off these flaps here and you might get lucky with some uh, ricochets apart from that the middle of the upper plate the lower plate's trash the cupola's pretty poor and the uh, parts of the turret which aren't the mantlet are pretty easy to penetrate uh, from the rear as you can see HE rounds are going to be able to go through very nicely indeed only 30 millimeters of armor on the back of the hole and on the back of the turret it's 30 millimeters as well so that's definitely something to take note of one thing I want to reiterate again is that these flaps there is no hitbox behind this as you can see the actual side of the tank starts there where that green is so from the front you can track it but you can't penetrate it so that's definitely something to take into consideration if you're playing this tank what you want to do you want to side scrape against 120 millimeter caliber guns or lower you want to try and avoid people shooting your lower plate and try and get them to hit the auto ricochets on your upper plate so that's it for the armor viewer of the old proto amx 30 let's have a look at my commander and equipment setup and see how that affects the stats of this tank so in terms of the equipment i run advanced optics improved ventilation and a gun stabilizer 
And in terms of my commander skills, I run 6th sense, born leader, rapid loading, steady aim, rapid aim, snapshot, run and gun, situational awareness and camouflage expertise. In terms of the commander skills, I run 6th sense and born leader as standard on every commander, which really helps out. Uh, with the effectiveness of all your skills, but also Sixth Sense is a lifesaver for me and I've always used it on my tanks. Rapid loading to help the DPM. Then I run Steady Aim, Rapid Aim, Snapshot and Run and Gun to improve the accuracy on the move as well as when you're stationary and get it down to a very nice level. I use Situational Awareness to improve the view range and Camouflage Expertise to uh, improve the uh, Steel Concealment Rating and the Concealment Rating of this tank. And in terms of the equipment, advanced optics, uh, clues in the name, I'm improving my view range by 10%. Improve ventilation to improve my crew performance by 5%. And gun stabilizer, which does help the accuracy of this vehicle um, on the move by 20% and the turret rotation accuracy by 20%. I also run a large med, large repair kit and a uh, combat rations or the enhanced rations as they're called to improve the uh, crew performance by 15% when um, it's actively used and passive boost 10% to the command XP and 10% to the crew performance. So how does that affect the stats of the old Proto AMX-30? Well, as you can see, I've now got a very nice view range of 497 meters, meaning I am able to spot for myself. And my still concealment rating is 330 meters, which isn't great, but for a fairly large profile medium tank, it's not too bad at all. The gun handling skills has improved my turret traverse. Uh, stats to 47.35 degrees a second which is very nice indeed meaning I'm able to snap my turret around at people that are trying to get around me and lastly in terms of the aim time it's improved to 1.9 seconds which is very manageable indeed and the accuracy has improved to a very nice 0.28 from 0.36 as we have such powerful commander skills that reasonable DPM, sort of mediocre DPM of 1857 has now improved to 2,349 damage per minute, which means I reload for 300 alpha damage in 7.66 seconds, which feels very nice. And that 300 alpha damage, when you do roll high, does feel like you're trading very effectively indeed. So that's it for the stats of this vehicle. Uh, that's it for uh, talking about this comparison. Let's get stuck into the first of four gameplays. So we are now into the first of four gameplays in today's video and we are here on Ducla Pass in the Alt Proto AMX 30. We have just snapped a shot into the EBR Hotchkiss there. And the reason I am behind this rock in F9 is because I was making my way down the 9-0 line, trying to head towards the sort of south and the central area to try and get some vision like we have just got on the Draugon. But there are four light tanks in this game and two of which are in a platoon, which means that they have sort of swarmed the center of the map. I got spotted and I've taken hard cover as there are two artilleries on the enemy team, but we managed to get two shots into that Hotchkiss there, and we managed to snap our turret uh, around with the pretty nice turret traverse this tank has once you have applied the uh, commander and equipment skills to this tank. It does feel very nice. It snaps around, the aim time feels very comfortable, the accuracy is down to a very nice level with my setup. And with the 1000 meters a second shell velocity there, we managed to get a shot on a fast moving EBR Hotchkiss and take him out of the game, which means that there are now three light tanks taken out, which does help us with the vision for the remainder of this battle. I've got 776 direct damage so far, 271 assistance, and although I am spotted, I'm going to take a bit of a risk here, try and push forward, and we're going to come into this position and try and help out this Dreadnought, and that's a very nice uh, tier 7 gun to have backing me up in this position. Just going to try and get into a position so I'm able to take the inside of this rock, and we're going to try and get shots on tanks that are poking out just in front of us. We get a nice shot there into the sort of drive wheel, uh, into the side of that Draugon, and 
7.7 second reload on a 100 millimeter gun it feels pretty nice it's not staggering dpm or anything spectacular but it is enough uh, to be a fairly decent support we're angled at a sort of 45 degree uh, angle when we are coming round this corner hopefully people will shoot towards the outside of our upper plate and they will ricochet off but i am willing to take some trades in this tank uh, i move forward there just to take a shot for that dreadnought as i'd like to keep his gun in the game I am not sure what happened to that shot at all. It looked like it just went completely through that 45 TP, but fortunately enough, he misses his second and we pop round with that pretty nice reload of 7.7 .7 seconds that I've got it down to, and we take him out of the game. And it doesn't really matter what position I'm in at the moment. I'm able to get my gun around with 11 degrees of gun depression, and I'm going to spin around now to make sure the thickest part of my armor is facing the opponents just to give me the best chance of bouncing some shells we do fluff a shot there it either went through the cupola of that 1001p or we just missed to the left so i'm going to load the premium rounds because that is a notoriously hard uh tank to penetrate through the cupola at least for me it just seems to always bounce off i went for a silly shot through the side of the turret there which was going to auto ricochet but we decide to go for the cupola as we should do here with the premium rounds and very nice we can go through every single time uh, at this angle and we're slowly whittling this 1001p down just poking out whenever we get a reload making sure to listen out for when the enemies are firing so that we are free to go round you don't have too many hit points at 1250 so you definitely want to try and trade as effectively as possible but this battle's looking pretty nice at the moment we're up to just shy of 2.8k direct damage and 1000 assistance and we're going to rush forward and see if we can get a little bit extra out of the end of this game going to come up behind warren our friend lone wolf 750 in the t-34 black i do put a shot into him then i do a little bit of a salute uh, I was going to go for him again, but we'll get a shot into this Lycan, and I was expecting to get taken out by him there. Um, but yeah, we've done enough to hopefully secure the win in this game. Uh, a very nice result for the Alt Proto AMX 30, and now it's just about taking uh, the T34 out of the game and the Lycan, and hopefully this one will be taken down nice and sharpish by our team so we can look at the end screen and see how we did in this game but that was a very typical game that i've been having in the alt proto amx 30 uh, very reasonable assistance a pretty decent damage score we helped our team out there with some kills as well and yeah an all-round pretty decent support tank so we finish in in the mvp slot in that game that's a first class 1668 basic speed with three kills 3.3k direct damage a thousand assistance and a profit with or without a premium account so that's it for the first game there on duke la pass we're now going to head into the second gameplay so we are now into the second gameplay and we are here on el haluf in the alt proto amx 30 and we've made our way over here to b3 in the brawling location this is a fantastic place for us to use our 11 degrees of gun depression we do have to be a little bit careful as there's hardly any support that have come our way and in this game you are going to see we're going to have to be very patient try and make the correct play in different uh, positions we're now getting rushed by the astron rex with that very dangerous autoloader so we're just reversing up trying to bait him over this hill and we managed to get a couple nice auto ricochets off the front of our tank and we're still fully loaded with our hit points we managed to bounce free off that astron rex just by angling up and trying to make the most of our armor and it's not always going to work but if people don't know where they're shooting or they're just auto aiming you are going to get lucky occasionally and those few ricochets might be able to be enough to keep you in the game and you saw before that Astron Rex came after us, we did manage to get a nice side shot into the side of the turret of that TNH there in front of us. With a pre pretty decent sort of gun handling, it feels very nice. The bloom isn't too big at all and the shell velocity feels very nice. And yeah, it's just a pretty comfortable 
support medium tank it's not extraordinary in any way but it's a nice little challenge for people that might want to play with a kind of glass cannon tank with a tank that doesn't have too much armor pretty decent gun depression it's a nice tank to learn the support uh, style gameplay and it does teach you to preserve your hit points to choose your engagements it's not the most forgiving tank but it does have a little bit of armor that you can try and use and uh, yeah it's not very popular on pc it's considered a pretty big dud in terms of the tier 8 premium tanks but here on console i think it fits relatively well it's not going to be extremely popular but i actually quite like it and it's a nice challenge uh, to try and play these tanks that aren't the most powerful that aren't op and sort of perfect them because then when you play the better tanks you will completely dominate in your games but here we are one tank up it's 12 versus 11 at the moment we've managed to get a kill we've bounced those three rounds and we've got a couple of shots in we've gone for the trucking shot there on that astron rex to try and keep him on that hill and hopefully the tank destroyers and the medium and heavy tank behind us can finally start getting some shots in as the charioteer does oblige and take him out as we get another damaging shot for ourselves. It's a pretty even game so far. We've managed to hold this position with the help of this Maotian. And I'm just letting him know that I'm going to go in on this Skoda T50. We get a shot into him as we auto-aim and the Maotian follows up. And yeah, we're having a nice sort of time here with the Maotian. Unfortunately, he hasn't got great traverse with that massive super heavy chassis. We do get a shot into that TNH there. With the very nice standard penetration this tank has, I lazily auto-aimed where I really should have aimed, but the penetration uh, worked for us there. And it's a very nice penetration at 232 on these standard rounds. You don't really have to fire too many premium rounds at all, but I like to load a nice selection for those tier 10 battles when you are fighting those super heavies. Or for engagements like this where it's kind of... If you lose it, the game could be over for you and you just want to make sure of those rounds and the 263 millimeters of premium pen seems to work out very nicely indeed. So we're up to a fairly respectable level so far for this game. We have taken a couple of shots, but now we're going to try and get a nice shot into the side of this object for 32. We get one into him. We reverse back. The mousing look. Looks like he splashes an HE round off the side and the Leopard prototype takes out that very dangerous tier 9 Soviet medium tank. And now we are going to advance forward and try and take out the remaining four tanks, two of which are artillery on the enemy team. Say so thank you to the Maotian for helping me as he was the only one that really helped in this position. And it's allowing us to use the mobility of this tank, get forward and try and get the last remaining bits of damage and assistance and kills out of this game and this is one of the great things about this tank and any kind of mobile medium tank is that you are one of the tanks that can get forward at the end of the battle and mop up the remaining xp from the game unfortunately for our friendly motion it's going to take a while to get into position but we can get forward here and hopefully get some spots on the enemy team and i make a bit of a misplay there by actually stopping when i got spotted I should have advanced into this cover behind this rock a little bit sooner and as a result we do take a splash from the artillery but we have spotted the artillery up and we're starting to get some juicy assistance. We spot that SU-12254 there on the hill and we're just going to have to stay in this position as we're being targeted from the left and from the right but we're getting some nice assistance at the end of the game and this is just showing you that if you do stay patient preserve your hit points, keep them into the end of the game. You can use your mobility, you can trade at the end of the game and get a pretty nice result out of it. So this SU is coming after us. We're just going to have to go forward here. We get a nice auto aim shot there. We're running gun coming in clutch as a commander skill. We managed to take another round on the move at that artillery and we take him out. And now we're up against a turretless tank destroyer. We're going to bait him around this corner he's getting shot in the side from our teammates and in this gap we can get a nice side shot there and we're hoping to reload to be able to take this su12254 out unfortunately we don't the leopard does take the kill but we end a pretty 
decent gain there with a nice profit with or without a premium account. Another first class battle finishing in the MVP slot with two kills, 2.5k direct damage and 2.7k assistance with those three blocked shots as well. Showing you all that uh, this tank is capable of. It's just a very nice all round support vehicle that was in a tier 9 battle. So we're now going to head on into the third game and see what we can get up to there. So here we are on Fisherman's Bay in the third battle of today's video. We're in a tier 8 matchup in the Alt Proto AMX30 and we've just come to this midridge. We're in F5 at the moment and we're just trying to get some vision out towards the centre, towards tanks making their way into the town down the 8 and 9 line and just trying to get any shots at these light tanks that are fluttering around in the middle. You don't have to give an awful lot of lead at these kind of mid to short range engagements because of that nice shell velocity on your standard and premium rounds. And we're managing to just whittle the enemy down at a fairly reasonable pace. We have that 7.7 second reload with our setup and we're able to sort of reset our stealth in between these rounds and uh, get pretty reliable rounds and consistent rounds into the enemy with the nice penetration and this is just the sort of playstyle that you have to adopt in a tank like this. The moment that you become too aggressive, you get too confident, the armor won't hold up for you and you will get taken out very quickly indeed as you do have that very low 1,250 hit points. But if you're patient and you're sort of smart about your engagements, you trade effectively when you have to at certain parts of the game, you are able to have decent results. And it's a pretty nice tank to be able to teach you this support style gameplay. It's very similar to a kind of gameplay in something like a Leopard prototype where you are almost always going to be taking damage from the enemy and you just have to find positions where you're able to get cross shots on enemies that are spotted but you can also try to get vision out yourself spot for your team and try and use your mobility to advance into advantageous positions we're feeling pretty confident here that the town is cleared out we are already up by sort of four tanks it's 15 versus 11 now so we're going to advance forward a little bit into this central area there's always going to be tanks here on Fisherman's Bay that are situated in sort of A1, B1, A1, uh, A2 and B2 in that little corner where all the tank destroyers like to hide. So the moment we get spotted in this position, we are going to have to try and pull back into some hard cover. There's also artillery on the enemy team and uh, this tank does not take kindly to artillery. It's very weak everywhere on the side and the rear and on the engine deck. So you do have to be careful. We stop there to get a nice shot into the 4502A, but we do get spotted, meaning we do have to uh, race forward into that cover in front of that house. We get some vision there on the artillery in the back and some of the tanks that are situated down the one line, which means that we're picking up some assistance and we're also picking up some nice damage. And I hope that you're seeing that this is just a very nice, consistent gun. We're going to wait for our shot there on that T92. We managed to auto aim at that distance and take him out. We are taking a little bit of fire and it's not a done deal this game. So we're going to try and use our armor as effectively as possible. We're going to side scrape out of this building. We get a shot there into the rear of that Italian medium tank. We're going to wait till we get restealthed and then we're going to put our gun to work again. And I found that this is a very, very nice gun, very consistent very uh, representative of this French 100mm gun. It just feels very nice with good penetration, nothing too flashy, but you do get the job done. We're going to wait till that diamond back turns its side on us. We get a shot into him and now we're going to advance forward. A little bit risky at the moment, as you can see, we are now on 158 hit points, but we are getting a little bit of vision and we're advancing whilst we are advancing. We're trying to get shots in and we're also wiggling to hopefully bounce some shells off the front of our tank, which we actually managed to do. This light tank comes up behind me, but with the very nice gun handling and nice tra turret traverse that we have improved with our commander and equipment set up we managed to snap our turret around and take out that light tank stop for a moment pretty nice aim time get a shot into the lower plate of that t25 aet and now we're going to come into this position here and choose our next target 
pretty nice reverse speed there, managing to get out of the way of that shell of that Italian medium tank just in time as we would have been taken out. And I'm just hoping to get one final remaining bit of damage in this game. So we're going to go for the one with the most hit points here, come up behind this 4502A and hopefully we can get one or more rounds in. Make a misplay there, just firing straight at the front of that tank, which was never going to work at all. And then I overshot this building. I was hoping just to skid behind it. We do get taken out, but we do still have a pretty decent game. And it's just another example of an all-round decent game in this tank. We finish in the MVP slot there with 4.1k direct damage, a high caliber medal, 1.4k assistance, three kills and a profit with or without a premium account, showing you it's just a very nice all round support vehicle. So that's it for that game there on Fisherman's Bay. We're now going to head on into the fourth and final battle of today's video. So welcome to the fourth and final gameplay of today's video. We are here as you can see on Sand River and we've made our way from the northwestern spawn into this position here in F5. We're going to spot out towards the south tanks that are making their way into position. There's only one artillery on the enemy team which is a bit of a problem in this position as it's usually a hot spot as that poor light tank found out. Uh, to the left of me. I hope that wasn't intended for me. If it was, I do apologize, but we have managed to get one shot in already and we're just trying to be as careful as possible whilst also trying to push our view range out because we've got it to a very decent level and we're able to play a kind of light tank style gameplay. We are taking some blind fire from someone in the southeastern corner and I'm just trying to scout there for the shell tracers, but we don't manage to see anyone. Uh, and we're just waiting for our next target. It's a bit of a problem here because we're most likely going to be spotted when we fire. Uh, we're going to chance a shot there at that Sturm Panzer. We get one shot there, track him in place, and we don't get spotted, which means that I'm pretty comfortable now in this position. And I'm just getting uh, supporting fire on tanks that are spotted from my teammates we are pushing the vision out ourselves down this little valley so if people do advance we will be able to spot them and we're just trying to put our gun to work whenever we get the chance and the fact that the dpm isn't spectacular it's not uh the best and it's definitely not the worst uh isn't isn't the be all and end all really because there's not too many positions or times in battles when you are continuously firing especially on large open maps which means that the more consistent your gun is and the more consistent gun is going to be the one that comes out on top it's not always necessarily dpm that is king so uh, it's definitely something to think about when you're playing these tanks that have uh, higher sort of caliber guns slower reloads but not flashy dpm they're not always the best in close engagements, but from this support style gameplay, it can work very well indeed. Uh, we have got spotted in that position, and we've got ourselves here on Sun River into a little bit of a jam. Um, we're trying to get into a nice position where we can get into cover behind these dunes. Fortunately, whilst we are traversing into position, we are able to use our very nice mobility there to avoid fire from many different tanks and we're also getting some nice vision out on the enemy. We baited that Panzer uh, 58 Mutz over that ridge and we're getting some lovely juicy assistance. I'm making the most of these ridge lines here as I'm trying to avoid fire from this LHMTV. We're going to try and free aim a shot here on this British light tank and try and make our shots count as it will have a better DPM than us. So waiting for him to cross that gap, get a nice shot there. Unfortunately, we low roll, but we're just trying to play ring around the rosy with these dunes. We're keeping our vision out on this Tiger 2 and some more enemies. And I'm a little bit wary of going up on this ridge because I know there was an object uh 416 or 416 I believe in the corner so I'm always just trying to remember what positions tanks were on this map. This light tank is coming again but he thinks better of it and now we're able to get a nice side shot on that Panzer 58 Mertz to take him out of the game. 
we spot that comet there on that ridge the light tank comes in again on us we're making sure to free aim out of sniper view aim slightly ahead of this tank and with the shell velocity we should be able to take him out of the game hopefully we're able to get the killing blow which we indeed do and we pick up another kill for our tally gonna try again to get a shot into this comet he comes over the ridge with our penetration at this distance easy to go through the tier 7 british medium tanks turret and now we're able to advance over and hopefully get another shot into him as he is running away he gets a shot into us but we managed to angle it 45 degrees at the last moment and bounce the round put another round into him and we are slightly heavier than that tank we don't have any armor and as you can see we took a lot of damage there from that comet but we did get the kill and some extra damage and there's only two remaining tanks on the enemy team so i was willing to take that hit but don't think because you are a bigger medium tank you're going to do lots of ramming damage uh, you might do lots to lighter armored targets but you will also take quite a big chunk of damage yourself we stop there get a nice sniping shot into that object 416 and now we're going to advance forward and hopefully get one remaining shell in this game to end this gameplay and also end this video. I was hoping and I'm thinking uh, we're going to jump over this cliff and get an epic kill, uh, kill dive or dive kill at the end of this game. But unfortunately the Indian Panzer takes out that object 416. But we still had another nice game finishing MVP in that game with a nice profit with or without a premium account. Another first class. I haven't got the mastery in this tank yet, I believe, which is very unusual for a first day release. But we pick up four kills, 3.1k direct damage, 1.8k assistance, and we blocked 140 damage from that comet. And if you want my opinion on this tank, I think it's a very reasonable support tank. It's actually quite fun to play. It's a lot better on console than it is on PC. It's definitely not OP, but it might train people. It would be a good training vehicle if you want to learn to play with low hit points with not too much armor. But it is a little bit forgiving with a little bit of armor on the hull and on the turret. You have that beautiful 11 degrees of gun depression. And I quite like this tank. Uh, it's maybe not worth the price it is now wait for it to come on sale and i think it will be a good deal but i hope that this review has been informative and or enjoyable thank you all so much for your support and until next time i'll see you on the battlefield and bye for now